Since the trapezoidal rule is a numerical estimation, I think it makes a lot of sense to use a numerical tool. So I'm going to take a few minutes to write a basic MATLAB script that will do the trapezoidal approximation for me for my choice of function, domain, and number of trapezoids. I'm going to do this in MATLAB Online. I've opened up a new script window, so I've named this trapezoidalrule.m. It's a new M file. And what I'm going to do now is create the terms that need to be adjusted for different functions, different domains, different number of trapezoids. I'm going to put those at the top. Then I'm going to add some code to compute the trapezoidal estimate that should adjust itself automatically. So this is trapezoidal rule from single variable calculus. The basics. Let's do adjust these for different contexts. Okay, the first variable I'm going to define is the number of trapezoids that we create. We've been calling that n, so let me say that my basic script I'm writing is going to do four subintervals, but that can be changed for future iterations. Okay, and then let's do our domain. So how about a is 0 and b is 2? We'll just start with that. So this is the left point of the domain, and this is the right point. So you just adjust those as needed. Next, I'm going to define my function f as an anonymous function. So I will say f is an anonymous function of x. And then you have to be familiar with how to write functions in MATLAB. For example, e to the something is x but of. So I will say x squared. And then let's divide that by 2. Then I'm going to do 3 times sine of x cubed plus 1 divided by 1 plus 2x squared. Okay, I just made this function up. The rest of the code is going to consist of lines that shouldn't need to be changed. So to run this for different functions and different domains, I should only need to adjust lines 4 through 7. Okay, let me make my script window a little taller. I'm going to create the domain now. So I'm going to use a lin space that's going to chop the domain up into even sized pieces. It needs to go from A to B, and then you say the number of points that you create in this vector. If we create four sub intervals, that's a total of five points, because we have to include both the leftmost and rightmost points. So it's n plus one, and let's take a look at what this produces in the command window if I run this. Okay, so you can see that we've created four sub intervals from 0 to 0.5, from 0.5 to 1, from 1 to 1.5, and from 1.5 to 2. Each of those points will get plugged into our function. We also need to know the width of all of these subintervals. For that, I can just do the second entry in this vector minus the first entry because they all have the same size. So next I'll call it dx, like delta x. This is going to be the second entry in the domain vector minus the first entry. In order to compute this, what I'm going to do is the left point estimates plus the right point estimates divided by 2. So let me do the left side estimate. For the function outputs, I need to evaluate f on the first n entries in the domain vector. So if you're looking at this domain vector I have in the command window, I want to plug in 0 0.51 and 1.5 into f. I'm going to call this left side, and that's going to be f of domain, the first entry through the nth entry. Notice here n is 4, and I do indeed want the first four entries in this vector. So that's the function value, and then the width is dx. Let's also do our right side estimate. I'll call this rs. And now for the function values, I need to shift what I did on line 14 over by 1. So we'll say it's f of the domain entries from the second entry through the final entry, which is actually the n plus 1th entry in our vector. For the domain vector we're looking at in the command window, that would be 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and 2. And then we multiply that by the width of each trapezoid. 
Now there's something I forgot to do on lines 14 and 16, and that is actually add up these terms. So if I run this so that we can see what lines 14 and 16 produce in the command window, notice that RS is a vector with four entries. This entry is the value of F at the first right point. So that was actually F at 0.5 times delta X. Then this is F at one times delta X, F at 1.5 times delta X, and F at two times delta X. So what I need to do to actually get the sum is use the sum command for each of these. So I'm going to say add up all of the entries in these vectors. Okay, this should produce just a number. All right, so with four subintervals on this function, the left point estimate is about 5.8 and the right point estimate is about 20. So that's a pretty big discrepancy. To get the trapezoidal estimate, what we will do is average them. There's actually a command in MATLAB called traps. So let me call this traps estimate. Okay, that's gonna be our name for this. It's LS plus RS divided by two. Okay, so if we run that. We can see that the trapezoidal estimate for this function on this domain with this number of subintervals is about 13. Okay, lines nine and down don't need adjustment except maybe I will suppress some of this output. Okay, so after running this, the only thing that will print out is traps estimate. Let me now take this domain and chop it into finer pieces. So how about we do 20 subintervals? This would be a pain to do by hand. But now in MATLAB, I'm just gonna run this and we get that our estimate has decreased to about 10.54. Let me check this on a function I actually know. So how about we do something like x cubed from zero to two. We can work that out by hand, but let's first see what this gives us. And notice I didn't need to adjust anything below. So this is going to give us a trapezoidal estimate on the domain from zero to two with 20 sub intervals for this function. Let's make it one to four just for some variety. And how about 15? Okay, I'm gonna run this and we get 63.9. What is it actually? Well, that's just a question of anti-differentiation. So x to the fourth over four evaluated at b equals four is four to the fourth divided by four minus one to the fourth divided by four. That's the true value. And you can see that we have indeed estimated it. So we got 63.9, the true value is 63.75. What if I make this 150 subintervals? That's kind of a lot if you imagine 150 trapezoids we get much closer. So since these estimates can be tedious to do by hand, like I would never wanna do 150 subintervals by hand, you can use this script to compute the trapezoidal rule.